The Ma Unity Agenda has delivered a petition to the Attorney General seeking to protect the intellectual property of the Maasai brand and its traditional knowledge to guarantee survival of the Maasai people. According to the Maasai community, is yet to benefit from the commercialization of their intellectual property, whose value is estimated internationally at over 1.2 billion shillings annually. Masi Acheng has the story. The Maasai community has set in motion a process that could guarantee them earnings from intellectual property related to them. The community has delivered the Ma intellectual property rights petition to the Attorney General Kihara Kariuki. The petition focuses on the protection of the intellectual property of the Maasai brand and its traditional knowledge to guarantee the survival of the Maasai culture. So one of the petition uh, to the Attorney General is to enable us to be part of that uh, commercialization so that we can benefit from that uh, to, down to the community level. Uh, Ole Chelolo has been very active in, in this thing and he will tell us what he did. But part of, as you probably will hear, part of the reason that he hasn't been very successful is actually the participation of the national government. And that's really the aim of this petition, to make the government partner with the community for the benefit of their own intellectual property rights. Wilson Musiang, the intellectual property advisor of the Maasai, says there's a need for protection of the rights of all communities. He noted that the Maasai brand and its traditional knowledge has huge potential if protected to enable the community to enter into licensing agreements internationally or locally for commercially viable ventures with national or international companies. There's been an evolution of the law. So the biggest uh, uh, steps that has been taken is the 2010 constitution and Article 11, which which now completely uh, puts culture into the constitution. Now this, also to actualize that, there's been further legislation in 2016 that was enacted towards that end. Um, after that, now the government is now trying to operationalize that because operationalizing of that law. So there was really nothing we could do. We, we the Maasai, do not have a locus to deal with an international company in New York or in Britain, we have no locus. Only the government can do that. And at, at this point, the government has enacted, there is enough international law, there is enough local law for this actually to take place. According to the community, the Maasai way of life is under serious threat due to global warming, increase in population, land sale and land degradation. Kulingana na unyanyasaji ya makampuni mbalimbali mbali, haswa zile kubwa kubwa za kimataifa mm. ambayo wamechukua vitu za ambayo inawahusu wamasai wanatumia kwa niaba ya ku, kupata pesa bila ku you know, kuwashirikisha wenyewe na hata hata vile vile ukishachukua kitu ya mtu bila hata ruhusa afadhali hata kupata ruhusa hawana ruhusa wanachukua tu wanaenda wanaifanyia kazi wakisha maliza wanapata pesa zao. So tunauliza leo eh, kama vile mulipoona kuwa serikali eh, imetukubalia ime kuamba ndiyo tuko na jambo ya kujibu, eh, tuko na jambo ya, ya kuelezea and, and eh, ushaona kuwa wamekubali hiyo petition yetu na, na, na tumeshukuru. Recent population statistics estimate that there are about 841,622 Maasai in Kenya. It is also one of the communities whose traditional regalia has transversed to borders to acquire recognition internationally. For now, the community awaits direction from the Attorney General's office on their petition. Reporting for Metropole TV, my name is Masi Achieng.